Good morning from Cartagena. Yesterday when we went to breakfast at Esquina del Pendabono, we noticed some guys across the street selling some local food and drinks. And so that's what we decided to try this morning. I ended up getting a Papa Reina, I think it's called. And what it is, is basically a deep fried potato that has been stuffed with a hard boiled egg and some meat. To me, it reminded me of a scotch egg. And for me, I had a couple of arepas, which were very different to the arepas that we had yesterday, but they were still very nice. And they came with eggs and meat in them as well. And then we also got two coffees and the total for our breakfast was I think like $4.40 Canadian, which I believe is like $3.20 American. So really good value for money. But this morning we're going to try and go to Castillo San Felipe de Barajas, which is a fortress here in the city. And the reason I say try is because it has been raining and it's also kind of scheduled to rain today. So we'll just see how far we get. So we have just got into the castle. It cost 33,000 Colombian pesos, which for Canadians is $11, for Americans is $8 per person. Another thing to note is that you don't have to pay by cash. They definitely do have card machines here. So that should hopefully make your entrance here a little bit easier should you choose to come. Let's go explore. I'm not sure if you saw our previous video, but in our previous one we mentioned that there is an 8km perimeter wall around the old city of Cartagena. The reason for that was because this was a major trade hub which had plenty of riches that other major powers at the time wanted to get a hold of. So therefore they felt the need to defend the city against all potential intruders. So alongside the walls they built this fortress between 1536 and 1657, they brought slaves over from Africa specifically to build this. It took a number of goes to do it because there are a lot of different layers to it. But then when they had completed it, this was able to make Cartagena a completely impenetrable city. While the walls were good at deflecting anybody coming by sea, this blocked the only entrance available by land. And to that end, it repelled attacks from privateers, pirates, and forces from the likes of France, Britain, and the Netherlands, all the way up until the 19th century, at which point Colombia then strived for independence. We're just finishing up our time here at Castillo San Felipe and the good news is that the rain has held out so far. <laughs> but I just wanted to acknowledge the tunnels that we went through. There is apparently an absolute maze of tunnels beneath this castle and we wandered through just a small part of that. And we can't find any information on what their purpose was. 
But all I can say from our experience is that the soldiers who were stationed here must have known them like the back of their hands, which if invaders came, I can imagine they would have been so disoriented because they were so dimly lit and there is definitely modern electricity in them now. And also I found my depth perception in there so off. When you consider the tunnels, which again would have been a very good way to corner intruders and then on top of that all of the huge defenses the ditches the moats the cannons it's really no surprise that this could withstand really severe attacks from other colonial powers at the time all in all it's just a very very impressive structure and the views of the city don't hurt either We've just come back to our accommodation to have a little bit of r, &R before heading out for our tour for the day. And we just enjoyed our first Colombian almuerzo. It turned out to be 17,000 Colombian pesos, which ends up being about $5.60 Canadian or about $4.10 US. So incredible value and another filling and delicious meal that we've enjoyed there. Yeah, just so you know, that was per person price, not total. Mm -hmm. I wish it were total, but uh, I Still think as an, in, yeah, as an individual price, it's fantastic. Mm -hmm. And I really enjoyed the flavor of the beans, the dressing on the salad was great. So highly recommend, super affordable. Wish food was this affordable back in Canada and the UK. Mm -hmm. But we will take our wins where we can. We've just arrived to Parque Centenario, which is where we're meeting our tour group. But I just wanted to give you a little bit of background on the park before we go further in. It was established in 1911 to commemorate the 100 year anniversary from when Cartagena established independence from the Spanish Empire. When you come to the middle of the park, then you'll see this obelisk, which is dedicated to the people who are at the forefront of the independence movement for Cartagena. Now that we're here, we're just waiting for our tour to start, and then we'll get cracking. What was once an unsafe area known for drugs and crime, Getsemane has now become the city's hippest barrio. The neighborhood is characterized by the colorful murals and graffiti that decorate its walls and tell the stories detailing the values, identity and traditions of the people who inhabit the area. The energy of this vibrant community is most visible in Plaza de la Trinidad, where locals and tourists gather to enjoy food from street vendors and be entertained by street performers singing and dancing. Wander through the alleys decorated with canopies of umbrellas and flags to find a wide array of shops selling arts and crafts, as well as restaurants and pubs selling cheap beer and cocktails. Remember, when something is delicious, we say elegant. Elegant. Repeat after me. Let's celebrate such a Colombian, right? Repeat after me. Arriba. Arriba. Abajo. 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 Al centro. Al centro. One movimiento. The movie is very important. One movimiento. And pa dentro. Elegant.
We've just finished our free walking tour of Getsemane and I am so glad we did this one because yesterday after the tour of the old city and Getsemane, I canceled it. But then I read some more things on the internet and I went, you know what, I think we need to go back because when we came here yesterday, it felt rushed and I was 100% right. There were so many murals and graffiti that I didn't even notice yesterday and our tour guide Luis he lives here and he was just so passionate and energetic and I feel like I really now fully understand the vibe of this barrio and just how vibrant it really is. Yeah I think one of the things that I've noticed with a lot of the tours that we've done is that it gives you just an overview of the country and just kind of a whistle stop of the places that you want to go and see while you're in that place. But by doing just a tour of one specific neighborhood and Luis, our tour guide, is from here, he lives here, he has a business here. And so he was able to really give us a ground level look at it all, really a deep dive into this specific neighborhood, which is absolutely stunning. It's so culturally significant and it's just an amazing place. And so really it kind of felt less like a formal tour and more like somebody was just inviting you into their world and into their home. And it was just it's so beautiful. It's really a wonderful thing. I'm so glad we did this. I just feel so honored to have been on this tour. Me too. This was a genuine treat. Definitely, if you find yourself in Cartagena and you find yourself with a free late afternoon slash early evening, we cannot recommend this enough. You have to do this. It is so good and probably the best walking tour we've done, hands down. But that is all that we have planned for today. So we're going to call this here. And we will catch up with you when we head on to our next destination in Colombia. And we could not be more excited to take you along. So until next time, take care. And keep smiling.